Sandy says read. Welcome to the channel. Tonight we are going to do a tag. This is the, let me read it, the bookshelf book tag. I saw this idea over on Books and Lala's channel, so I will leave a link to her channel in the drop down box below so that you guys can go over and see uh, the way that she answered these questions. Oh my gosh, there are 12 questions. <laughs> This may be a long video. I'll try to keep it, you know, quick and snappy. Okay, guys? Uh, question one is, how many bookshelves do you have? And in this den, I have three tall bookshelves, three short bookshelves, and then the TBR tree. Then in my, um, in my office, you know, I work from home. In my office, I have two, like, utility bookshelves that are supposed to be used, like, in a garage. But you know, I'm cheap. So I use those for like magazines and lots of magazines and book inventory and stuff like that. And I think that's all the bookshelves. Um, question number two is how many actual books do you have? I actually went through and counted them before I started filming this. And even that was a little bit iffy. I'm not sure I counted correctly. <laughs> I mean, do you count concert tour books? Is that a book? I think that it is. And so I counted them. I did not count the books that are still in boxes in my garage because I don't know how many are in there and I'm not really sure which boxes really are books. And I did not count my inventory of my books because that does not count. Um, so 430, approximately 430. Hmm. All right. Question number three. How do you organize your books? Um, <laughs> randomly. I do have some sense of organization to them, but not a lot. One of the questions on here is gonna ask us to look at the bookshelves and I'll kind of talk a little bit about the organization then, but mostly it's like my fantasy books are here behind me. I've got my Brontes, which I love. I've got some like birds and turtles, the to be red pot tree, to be red tree, um, Tolkien, Christmas, poetry, eh, dragons. I mean, I've got them by, I, I guess you would call it by genre or not genre so much as by theme. There we go. Theme. Christmas is a theme. Poetry genre. <laughs> it's kind of random. We'll talk about that when we get to the, the final question on the list. Question number four asks, what is the oldest book on your bookshelf? Now I have, uh, I have Beowulf which is like the oldest written book on my bookshelf. But the version that I have was released in 1950, or I guess that was printed in 1950. So the oldest book I have printed is Jane Eyre. This is a third edition and it was printed in 1848. So this is the oldest one I have on my bookshelves. And there's like a story behind how I got this one. And perhaps when we do the, the Bronte Fest at the end of this month, um, I'm filming this in July. And when we do the Bronte Fest at the end of July, maybe I'll talk about how I got Jane Eyre, this copy of Jane Eyre, because it took a little doing. Question five, what is the newest book on your bookshelf? And that would be Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. I just got this one um, from Page Habit. It's a new subscription service that I signed up for, and this one just came very recently and I actually did the unboxing here on this channel and I'll put a link to that <laughs> that fabulously spectacular video in the drop down box below. <laughs> Question number six, what is the longest book on your bookshelf? And I have to say that is The Riverside Chaucer. I actually got this book when I was in college because I took a class called Chaucer. Not including the glossary at the back, this is 1,210 pages. And then question number seven is, what is the shortest book on your bookshelves? And that one is um, a very short story that I wrote. I wrote um, Perceptions on New Year's Eve. I wrote this uh, in support of a longer novel that I had coming out around the holidays. So this was sort of just a, a marketing short story that I had to support that. So I actually, ready, trigger warning, 
I self-published this. But I self-published this just in support of the longer novel that was coming out to just get some more, some more publicity for that. Question number eight asks, what is the predominant genre on your bookshelves? And I'm going to say it's fantasy. That is the genre that I have just always been drawn to. When I go into the bookstores, that's the section I usually go to first. It's like, I'm like a homing pigeon going to the fantasy section. Um, okay, question number nine is, have you done a bookshelf tour? And I have not. I want to, but I want to do it after I get some sense of organization to what's happening over there in the corner. I mean, it is chaos, and it just makes me feel uncomfortable. Question number 10 says, go on a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number. So I did this before I started filming so that it wouldn't be all craziness. And the number that came up, <laughs> 241. <laughs> okay, so I plugged in, you know, that I have 430 books. The number that came up was 241, so I counted 241 books. And look, this is the book that was number 241 on my shelves. I have um, my 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 pet turtle that I've had forever. Her name is Joshua. Because <laughs> when she was a baby, you, you couldn't tell that she was a girl, so I named her Joshua. Uh, Joshua is now 30 years old. She's 30 years old this summer. And she's the size of a dinner plate now. So Joshua, Joshua went to college with me. Okay, Encyclopedia of Turtles. That's this book. So I'm supposed to talk about this book. Uh, and it is what it says it is. It's an Encyclopedia of Turtles. There's information in here on different types of turtles and tortoises. And it talks about, you know, how to take care of different turtles that you might, that you might have in your life. And, you know, if you, uh, like, okay, here is the scorpion mud turtle. This specimen is from Trinidad. Isn't he cute? He's a darling. Here we go. Peter Pritchard is a good herpetologist uh, to glean information from. So this is an excellent book. It's kind of heavy too. <laughs> this is an excellent book for information. Question 11 asks, do you have fan merch or any other decorations on your bookshelf? And I do have some um, you know what? In fact, let me show you this cool thing. Okay, for the Parrot magazine that I publish, um, In Your Flock, I had a book submitted to me for review called Beauty and the Beak, and it was about an eagle that had been, um, had been shot, and her beak was just mangled, and they, um, the people who found her had to make a prosthetic beak for her. So they sent me the book, and it's written as a children's book, um, explaining the story of how Beauty was rescued and, and the prosthetic that was made for her. And then there's a section of the book where they kind of go into detail about conservation of eagles. And just I mean, it's just a really good book for kids. I, en I enjoyed it myself. Did a review of it in the magazine. And when they sent me the review copy, they also sent me this prosthetic beak piece that was made. It was made um, on a 3D printer. How magnificent is this? This is an actual piece of eagle beak made on a 3D printer. Look at that. Look at it. Okay, so maybe that's not fan merch, but it's still cool. <laughs> it came from, you know, the, the publishers who were putting that book together. Um, other fan merch, you know, I have fan merch of my own um, that I've you know, put together, you know, bookmarks for the different books that I've had released. Um, mm, yeah, that's, that's kind of it, you know, bookmarks and different little things like that. Okay, let's go to the final question. Show us your bookshelf. Yeah, I did think about this. Okay, I'm going to stop filming me and turn the camera around to look at the bookshelves. So things are going to get a little shaky. I apologize. I'll try to keep it as you know, unshaky as possible. All right. Okay. Here we have the shelf of my books that I've had released. Below that, we have Terry Goodkind, um, one David Eddings. More fantasy.
more fantasy. This is the Brontes. You'll notice there's a couple missing on that shelf because I've got them out where they're being read. More Brontes, more Brontes. Okay, over here we have bird-related books going down to the turtle-related things. And next to it we have the To Be Read tree, which is a just embarrassingly huge. So much to read. So much to read. Okay, and then these are the embarrassing shelves. These are the shelves that are just random and crazy. Up top we do have uh, some Tolkien, um, the Poldark series. We have the Christmas shelf. Below that we have uh, dragons. And then it just starts to get, oh, there's a poetry shelf. There's a children's shelf. And it just starts to get crazy beyond that. I mean, beyond that, it's just crazy. There's a, a music shelf up top. But it's just so much stuff. Um, it is embarrassing how just random and crazy it is. So it all needs to be organized. And we'll do a bookshelf tour someday when we get it organized. Okay, so that was a quick little wrap up of question number 12. Uh, one of these days we'll have to do a bookshelf tour. But in the meantime, that's the um, bookshelf book tag for now. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that little subscribe button below, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much, guys. I swear we're going to do a bloopers reel for this channel. You hear that noise, right? Yeah, I can see the levels moving on the screen over there. Something's going on. Link to her channel in the drop down. The what? In the drop down box below. Let's do it again.